Здравствуйте, welcome back to Russian through uh, poems and paintings. Today's day 115, and so we have, I think, two more days, or no, this is the last day, I believe, of new uh, prefixes, although we do have a couple of other kind of prefix-related things to look at uh, tomorrow. Uh, and I think today's lesson will be relatively short. Uh, we're talking about coming uh, together, going apart, sort of converging or diverging, scattering, and then also going behind, right? Uh, so if we start with the painting, this is another gigantic uh, historical canvas by uh, Ryepin, uh, the Tarjestvene Zasiedanie Gosudarstvene Savieta, right? So this ceremonial uh, meeting session of the State Council on May 7th, 1901. And uh, let's read a little caption here. Все министры и высшие чиновники Российской империи сошлись на заседании Государственного Совета. Okay, our key verb here is сошлись, right? That's our new item we're going to learn today. All the ministers and higher officials, right? Higher level officials of the Russian Empire сошлись, right? They've come together. They've converged, so to speak, for this meeting of the state uh, council. После длинного заседания все опять разойдутся. There's our opposite verb. After a long session or meeting or whatever, everyone will again scatter. They'll go their separate ways. So they've come together. Uh, and because this is an in-town gathering, or at least we're thinking of it that way here, we say that they've, 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 we use motion by foot as our default. Right now, this example, actually, I don't honestly know. Are these people from all over Russia? I think because they were this is, they were in the capital city in, in Petersburg. They were probably all in Petersburg. But, you know, conceivably, we could have used a motion verb for converging by vehicle, right? If they had come from various uh, cities across the Russian Empire, right? But we're using here just, again, kind of by default, the motion by foot verb. Right, they'll they'll go their separate ways. They'll scatter. They'll diverge. Центре мы видим самого царя Николая Второго. Он сидит за столом под своим же портретом. Right, so we see Nicholas II. Right, he's sitting behind a table. Right, underneath his own portrait. Right, you see a portrait of him back there, and there he is, underneath the portrait. Okay, so let's talk first of all about these two pre prefixes s and ras. Okay, so we'll see these later used just by themselves, just the prefix. And again, they mean their basic meaning is together and apart, right? At least in the way we're looking at them here, right? Now, we do know that s can also mean down or down from, right? So we have to keep that in mind, that s um, can mean two, two different things as a prefix. Uh, and by the way, lots of these prefixes can have different meanings. Uh, but this one has a, has a different meaning even in terms of uh, just the most basic spatial understanding of, of the prefix, right? Down from, or simply down, or together, right? Convergence. Okay, so uh, we can use that with, for example, certain verbs of conveyance, like, uh, look at these first two examples. Kajitsa It seems that fate itself has brought us together, kind of melodramatic, sounds like something in a soap opera. But it was the best example I could think of, right? So, literally, it led us together. It brought us together. Okay, look at an example with ras, right? Masti razvili. Literally, they've drawn apart the drawbridges, right? So, with the drawbridge, right, the two parts there, drawn apart, right, or led apart, however you want to think about it. So, uh, that's the way you talk about raising drawbridges in Russia. Right, we can't get home. Sounds like something in Petersburg where they raise the drawbridges, and depending on where you live, you can't get home late at night. Okay, so there are two examples. Now let's look at another example with brat, right, literally taking. We can take something, literally take it together, meaning assembling it, or we can take it apart, disassembling it. Отец собрал новую игрушку. Right, dad put the toy together, he assembled it, but the kids took it apart right away. Okay, but those those types of verbs, especially the second one, right, those are some the type of thing we'll be doing more of in book four, right, where we're, we're taking action verbs and prefixing those. Today we're really, right now we're really more worried about motion verbs, right, prefixing verbs of motion. 
And we'll see that, you know, there, there are rather, rather limited examples, actually, where we're just using these two prefixes all by themselves with verbs of motion. And we can look at a few more examples. There are a couple of other verbs that are quite common, like разводить, развести. Okay, that verb by itself would mean to divorce someone, like you're a, a clerk, a judge, or whatever, whatever official is giving someone their divorce uh, decree, right? Uh, you could say, well, he divorced them, right? But usually that would be used with a, um, a reflexive particle, meaning to get divorced, right? To be divorced, uh, to, to get divorced, right? That's разводиться, развестись. And again, we see the uh, the literal meaning is to be led apart, right? You're being led apart. The couple is being separated, right? So a couple of, exam of examples. Его родители разводятся. They are being led apart. They are divorcing. Versus они развелись. They've gotten divorced. They got divorced. They are divorced. Okay, another, just again, a common example that we might as well mention, right? An idiom, разбираться, разобраться. Okay, we just saw that the verb разбирать, разобрать, right? We saw it in the example, разобрать means to take apart. Uh, now, this use where we add the reflexive particle, the, ref the resulting verb is just idiomatic. It's hard to really understand if we try to translate it literally. Like, it doesn't mean to take oneself apart. It just kind of means, uh, maybe the best way to think of it is to sort out kind of spontaneously or something, or to, to, to sort one's way out in something. Maybe that's another way to put it. It basically means to know all there is to know about something, to know, to know your way around something. Okay, so again, at the end of the day, we just kind of have to learn this as an idiom, just kind of learn the formula. That is, разбираться, разобраться в чем, right? You, you, uh, you do this in something, literally. For example, она хорошо разбирается в машинах. She knows all about cars, right? Она хорошо разбирается в машинах. And again, that's one of those idioms that it's really, I think, almost senseless to try to translate it literally. It just doesn't work out really at all, at least not in any way I can imagine. Or another example, давайте разберемся в этом. Right, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's sort things out. Let's, let's figure out what's going on here. Okay, now, so all of that is in some way a prelude to the real thing we have to say about these two prefixes, prefixes at least for now that with verbs of motion, we need not just the prefix, not just sa or ras, but we need the reflexive particle as well, right? And so we could actually think of this really as a kind of a circumfix. Some languages have that. Some languages have, well, we have prefixes and, well, not postfixes, but suffixes, right, which we add to the end of a word. Uh, and then we have... Um, some languages, again, uh, circumfixes, right? Where you need something kind of in front and something somewhere later, maybe at the very end. And it's those two elements together that convey a certain meaning, right? So they kind of work together. That's what we have here. So this is kind of something new. And again, ultimately, this is just kind of an idiomatic thing. We can't really um, understand the reflexive particle in any of the ways we normally uh, think about it, right? This doesn't mean... Uh, it's not, um, it's not reflexive meaning. It's not passive meaning. Um, you can maybe think of it rather loosely as a kind of reciprocal action, right? Uh, kind of this mutual coming together of multiple things. Um, but, you know, again, we just kind of have to learn this as a, as a fixed formula. Okay, so when we want to say things like um, to move together by foot, to converge by vehicle, to to fly to one place, right? To sort of converge through the air or through water or whatever it is, we're going to need to add the prefix and the reflexive particle, right? So for example, в Петербурге мы сойдемся снова, right? We will gather again in Petersburg. We'll all come together. Uh, we'll gather there. That's сойтись, right? Uh, let's use a vehicle verb. Все друзья съехались на свадьбу. All the friends gathered, or we could say kind of unpacking it, that they converged by vehicle for the wedding. They came together by vehicle. Они съехались. Okay, the opposite is we need раз plus ся. Все вышли из бара и разошлись. Everyone 
left the bar, they stepped out of the bar, and they went their separate ways on foot. That would be one way to unpack that. They diverged on foot. После свадьбы опять разъехались. Right after the wedding, all these guests who had converged by vehicle, they now diverge by vehicle. They go their separate ways by vehicle. Uh, another useful place you see this is creating the same, well, the verb with sa, the, the circumfix sa plus sia means again convergence, and you can use these with the verbs uh, pisać and zvanić. So, for example, to get in touch by writing, to come together, so to speak, by writing, is spisatsa, to come together, to sort of make contact by calling is sazvanitsa. Right, so those are two very common uh, verbs in Russian. When you're saying goodbye to someone, you're like, hey, keep in touch, call me, let's keep in touch by email or something. You would use these verbs often, right? Пока, завтра созвонимся, хорошо? Right, we'll get in touch by phone tomorrow. We will converge, so to speak, by phone tomorrow. Or давай спишемся через несколько дней. Let's get in touch by writing in a few days. Okay, a quick note with ras, as we might guess, since it normally ends in a z, right, in a z, uh, that would normally be devoiced in front of an unvoiced consonant to s. And with this particular example, right, not only do we pronounce it as an s, but we change the spelling, right? So we get, for example, rasjaditsa rasaitis, right? We're in the first example because of the ha, we change the spelling, we get ras, right, with an s. Okay, so um, again, the trick here is to to learn these these two examples as circumfixes and not to forget the sia. That's what people often do. They say it. they just forget about the sia, and you get something that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's just fill in a few blanks. Uh, the waitress quickly and let's say let's use past tense. Uh, she quickly carried the beer to the table. Okay, look, this is often quite descriptive, right? Uh, what did the waitress do? Well, she carried the beer, right? She's serving the beer. And think about Oktoberfest or something, right? Where you got these uh, waitresses with these, you know, like eight beers, you know, four beers in each hand. And they distribute them, right? So the idea is kind of distributing them. The beers are diverging, so to speak. They're going their separate ways to the separate tables, so this verb is, is very concise, very descriptive. Aficianka ocean buistra raznisla piva pastalam. Right? She quickly distributed the beer. She carried the beer in a diverging fashion. I'm not sure how you would like to unpack this, but hopefully you can visualize what it means. Okay, number two. Moise na sholdrabotu. Tipier on blank pizzu. Okay, now we have a, a kind of divergence verb with... Uh, Conveyance by vehicle, right? He's delivering pizza by vehicle, right? To all different places in the city, right? So we get ras, right? Tipier on razvozit pizzo. On razvozit pizzo. Um, okay, meaning he drives pizza to all different points in town. By the way, there are other verbs for delivering things, but we're just using this here as, as an example with razvozit, razvisti. Okay, three, razvedit, razvisti. Okay, literally to lead apart, right? So as we've seen, this can mean different things. It can mean to divorce a couple if you're some kind of magistrate or whatever. Or it can also mean to raise the drawbridges, right? To raise the bridges. Когда они, let's use future tense, когда они разведут мосты? When will they raise the bridges? Мне нужен график разводки мостов, right? I need a schedule of the... Razvodka, which is a noun form from related to the same verb. When is the schedule of the, uh, how can we put it, drawing apart of the bridges, literally. Chitirri, sabirach, sabrach, right, meaning to assemble. This can also mean to collect, right? What do you do when you collect? Well, you take things and bring them together, right? So let's see. Moidyadji ocean bagati businessman. My uncle is a very rich businessman. He collects yachts, right? He takes them. They're all over the place, and they converge in his collection, right? On subirayat yachty. Okay, number five. Zbigatsas bijatsa. Okay, now we have our kind of normal pattern here with verbs of motion to converge by running. 
Вчера был пивной фестиваль. So yesterday there was a beer festival. And we, we have a two-part example here, five and six. The crowd, or a crowd, converged by running. They ran for the free beer. They converged for the free beer. And then in number six, and again, they diverged, they scattered by running. They ran their separate ways when the beer ran out. Okay, so talpa, feminine singular, Zbijalis, right? First, talpa zbijalis, na bisplatne piva, and then srazu apiats razbijalis, right? Razbijalis kagda piva konchalis. Okay, again, very descriptive. Number seven, razjijats razjechatsa. Okay, again, uh, here we're diverging, we're scattering by a vehicle. Чемпионат мира по футболу закончится завтра. The, this was the World Cup back when it was in Petersburg, right? The World Cup will, uh, or literally the championship of the world for football, for soccer, right? The soccer championship. Закончится завтра. Uh, so it will end tomorrow. So future tense, the fans will go their separate ways, right? The tournament will end and they'll all go home by vehicle. Fanati разъедутся, right? Разъедутся. Okay, uh, let's see. Восемь. Разводиться, развестись. Okay, uh, again, this could mean to be led apart generally, but this usually means getting divorced, right? Это очень хорошая пара. This is a really good couple. I'll be surprised if they will get divorced, right? And again, we're, keep, we're literally using future tense here in Russian. Я удивлюсь, если они разведутся. Если они разведутся, я удивлюсь. Хорошо. Девять. Разбираться, разобраться. My friend is a dancer. He dances... Uh, he, wait, sorry. My friend is a dancer. He understands ballet really well, right? He really knows all the ins and outs of ballet. So again, we're using this kind of peculiar idiom. Он очень хорошо разбирается в балете. Он разбирается в балете. Again, that's one of those verbs that really doesn't make any sense when we try to translate it literally. Okay, our last prefix, and this is one of the, maybe the most tricky one in terms of understanding the meanings, but I think I can uh, help you with that. Uh, um, the prefix is za. And we know, hopefully from last year, you may remember that za is also a preposition and it means simply behind, right? So in terms of just the most basic meaning of za, we could think of behind, right? So to, to walk behind, to drive behind, to run behind, and, and so forth. But it's not quite that simple because um, you can go behind things in different ways, right? And uh, so the way I like to think about this, and this is really useful, uh, I'm not sure, by the way, I've seen this before. I don't know, but I, um, I you know, sometimes you feel like you, you made something up and then years later you're like, oh, my, I actually saw that in this book and I forgot where I ever saw it. But at any rate, I like to say that za describes a hooking motion, right? So just visualize a hook, a hooking motion, and that will allow us to capture almost all of the basic meanings of za. So the first, let's just think of most literally going behind something. Well, think about it. You can go behind something kind of uh, horizontally, right? Like the cat ran behind the dresser, right? You're kind of hooking behind something horizontally. You can also go make a hooking motion vertically, like maybe the sunset. The sun went behind the horizon, right? It went down like this. It made a hooking motion downward. You can even hook up onto something in Russian. We'll, we haven't really gotten a good verb for that yet, but one we'll see is zaliest, which means to climb up onto something. So again, that may be confusing at first, right? Why za, when we've already learned that za is your basic up prefix? Well, again, if we think about za as a hooking motion, then we see that it actually makes a lot more sense. If the cat crawled up onto the refrigerator, it didn't just climb up, it climbed up, and then again, this hooking motion, right? So that's za. Um, so let's look at a couple of simple examples, right? Sabaka zabijala za djereva. That's kind of a horizontal example. The dog ran behind the tree. Sonsa za za grizont. Kind of a vertical one, right? The sun 
went down behind the horizon. It set, we could say, right? Um, now, we get uh, some other meanings that are somewhat more specific, right? Miach kakta zlitiel varota. The ball somehow flew into the goal. Okay, now again, let's think carefully about this. This is a really great example, actually. Um, if we say the ball flew into the goal, well, why not simply use v, right? We learned that, and we know there's a verb vlitach, vlitiech, that means to fly into. So why not use that here? Well, we could use that, right? We could say miach vlitiel varota. And that would just mean kind of straightforwardly, the ball flew into the goal, right? But if we say zalitiech, Again, the key is to visualize some kind of a hooking motion of, of sorts, right? So the idea here is that the, the ball flew kind of improbably into the goal, right? So maybe um, maybe the player kicked it, put some spin on it, and you know made it kind of spin and hook its way, so to speak, into the goal. So you could think of it that way. There could be this kind of hooking uh, idea or, or curving or whatever. Then on top of that, we had this idea of, 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 a, of a, sort of, a sort of idea, somewhat vague maybe, of improbability, right? That somehow that ball, it curved and it flew into the goal in the hooking motion. And so the idea is that it's getting into this kind of tight spot that in a, in a somewhat improbable way. So if you have like something like a goal in sports or kind of some little opening and somehow a ball or whatever it is somehow finds a way to fly, to get into that opening, it's kind of improbable, uh, and also once it goes in there, it's kind of stuck. So that's kind of one additional meaning of za. It often implies kind of being stuck somewhere. You you wind up somewhere, and you're stuck, and you're fixed, or sometimes I like to say you're hooked to the spot. Right? This hooking idea kind of can can imply the idea of of fixing something. Right? G snagging it, detain detaining it and fixing it, nailing it down to a certain spot or a nook or a little slot or something like that. Okay, so you can see that's kind of a mess, right? There, are, There's lots of stuff going on there. But I think if you uh, kind of cling to this idea of a hook, you can kind of get an, use your imagination and see what's going on in these different situations. So let's look at a few other examples. Again, miach kakta zalitiel varota. Somehow it flew into the goal. It's stuck there in the goal now. It got in the goal. Zapishu adres vatu tetrads. There's an interesting example, right? Um, we've seen that verb before. You can think of it now as meaning something like fixing by means of writing, right? So you, someone tells you their address. It's floating around in the ether or whatever, and you fix it to the page. You fix it. You nail it down. You hook it down. You snag it and you enter it into the book by writing, right? Okay, some other examples. Muiza schlief to peak. Okay, the idea there maybe is kind of, again, hooking where you're going somewhere and you kind of end up far afield, so to speak, way out in the middle of nowhere. You've gone somewhere and you're kind of stuck somewhere improbably, maybe far afield. How did you wind up there? Now you're stuck, right? All of those kind of ideas are feeding into this example. Muza schlief to peak. We've reached a dead end. Kudat nas zavjol, right? Where have you led us to, right? Where where the heck are we? Where have you led us? Right? We're far afield. We're, we may be sort of stuck. We, right? Zavjol. Yaskora zaiduk tibia. That, that can mean simply stopping by. And we think of someone kind of doing their thing and they pass by a friend's house friend's house and like, okay, I'll stop by. We can imagine that too in terms of hooking motion, right? You're down the street and whoop, you duck into a store or to visit someone. You're stopping by, as we would say in English. Or at the zashlo slishkam daliko. This has gone too far, right? Again, kind of too far afield, maybe somewhat improbably things have drifted. Now there you're somewhere you don't want to be. It's gone too far, etc. Okay, so again, a lot to, to think about there. This is, in, the, in that sense, probably the most complicated uh, prefix. Okay, so let's fill in a few blanks with za. Yesterday, so past tense, somehow a, 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 a pigeon flew in to our window. It, it, it flew in, sorry, it flew into our apartment, maybe, knam, vaknoa, through the window, into the window. 
Okay, we have a little sequence here, right? Because we have a follow-up, right? It didn't want to fly out. It just refused to fly out again. All right, so let's start with the perfective. Right? Вчера голубь как-то взлетел. Right? Голубь is masculine, by the way. Голубь как-то, right? Somehow, improbably, он взлетел к нам в окно. It flew in to our place, right? Flew in to see us through the window. Никак не хотел вылетать. Okay, number two. Uh, running. Я всегда забегаю вперед. Okay, we can think of that as kind of an idiom, right? It means to get ahead of yourself, to, to skip ahead, to get ahead of yourself. is literally to run, again, sort of far afield. You're not where you should be, and you feel like maybe you, you're kind of stuck somewhere you didn't intend to go, right? Я всегда забегаю вперед. Давайте вернемся к первому примеру, right? Let's return to the first example. Number three, заходить, зайти. Пора вернуться домой, солнце уже blank. Time to go home, the sun has already зашло, right? Солнце уже зашло, it's already set, it's already gone behind the horizon. Скоро стемнеет, soon it will get dark. Okay, четыре. Do you see that store on the corner? At, yeah, ты видишь тот магазин на углу? Okay, we want to say, I ducked in there yesterday, I stopped by that store yesterday. Remember, we actually saw this verb with uh, imperfective of canceled action, right? You went in the store and you came out again. We need imperfective of canceled action. We get ya to da zahadil or zahadil, depending on who's speaking. Okay, another example. Uh, now we have a sequence, right? So uh, this could be imper uh, imperfective of canceled action, but the problem is we have a sequence. I stopped by the store and I bought bread. Я зашел в магазин и купил хлеб. Number six, uh, let me stop by, or why don't I stop by and see you tomorrow around six? We can have a bit of tea. Okay, again, the stopping by verb. Давай я зайду к тебе завтра около шести. Можно чай попить. Number seven, забивать, забить. Right, the famous... Soccer player scored three goals in yesterday's match. Okay, here's a new one we didn't mention. Useful one for sports fans, right? To score a goal, you, you, you use the verb zabit. Beat, as we know, means to strike, right? So that can mean to even to kick, right? Somehow you're striking the ball, whether you're kicking it or you're hitting it with a hockey stick or whatever, and you're beating it or striking it into this little slide, right? Into the goal, right? Maybe, again, somewhat improbably or in a way that requires skill, right? So anyway, at any rate, that's the idiom for scoring, right? Известный футболист забил три гола в вчерашнем матче. He scored three goals. Okay, let's review very quickly here on 81. Uh, there's pretty much all you need to know about these prefixes, right? So really, when we boil this down, there's not a whole lot to learn. You need to learn the prefixes and the base pairs we add them to, and voila, you've got dozens and, and dozens of new verbs. Okay, so let's just make some, some pairs. That's really the basic task. Hopefully, we know how to conjugate those, and we need to watch out for little spelling issues. Okay, to cross by foot, that'll be... Quiz yourself, pause the video if you need to. Переходить, uh, перейти. Right, note the и краткое, перейти. Number two, to go far away by air. That's going to be у, right, to go far away. Улетать, улететь. Number three, to go up by running. Взбегать, взбежать. Number four, to lead a bit away. Okay, that's от... Отводить, отвести. Right? Number five, to fly around. Okay, that's об, облетать, облететь. Number six, to carry in. Uh, вносить, внести. Number seven, to approach by air. Uh, remember, approaching is под. That one is a little bit tricky, maybe. Uh, подлетать, подлететь. Okay, to arrive by foot. Arrival, remember, our just default arrival prefix is pri. Приходить, прийти. 
Number nine, to drive past. Past is pro, proyezhats, proyezhats. Okay, number ten, to run behind. Okay, Be behind, that's basically za, right? Zabigats, zabijats. Number eleven, to converge, and then look at twelve, to scatter. Okay, so there, again, we can think of these as sort of opposites, right? To, to come together, that's the circumfix sa plus sya. And then to scatter, to diverge, to go your separate ways, that's ras plus uh, sya. Right, so to converge by foot, that's schaditsa, saitis, and to scatter by air, that would be razlitatsa, razlitietsa, razlitatsa, razlitietsa. So, for example, like a flock of, ver of birds, right? we could say the birds scattered by air, right? Petitsi razlitielis. Okay, so um, again, that does it for our basic prefixes. We're going to talk a little bit more about prefixation, kind of some different things uh, tomorrow, and then we'll move on with, with some other topics. Ну хорошо, это все на сегодня. Until next time, до свидания.